Hello learners of class 8. Learners, today we will do the second part of the first lesson class 8 English, the best Christmas present in the world. Learners, in the first part we read the text, we understood the text and we did some activities based on the reading of the text. We did uh, comprehension questions uh, through true or false, multiple choice questions, MCQ then some more discussion on that. With me is Devansi, your classmate and you will together learn some grammar today. Devansi, the story must have moved you. So, what part of the story, what action of the story moved you? About the old lady. And the, about the old lady. Her immense belief that her husband would come back. Okay. What about the narrator of the story? Did he do uh, anything any good or did he uh, just uh, ignored the letter? He, 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 he took the letter to someone. No? Mm. So, uh, he need not have done it, but he still did it. So, it was great, it was good of the narrator to, to uh, take the letter to the lady and made her feel happy. That is what learners, uh, uh, the story conveyed something the best Christmas present, as far as the old lady is concerned, the best Christmas present was the letter which her husband wrote, Jim wrote long back. Then she still believed with that. Learners, today, uh, Divanshi, today we will learn past and past perfect utterances, usage which occur in the textbook, uh, in the, the story. Before we move on to uh, learn past, the use of past and past perfect, let us tell the learners and you and we ourselves know the objectives of the lesson. Come on. Here are the objectives of the lesson. At the end of this lesson, learners, you will be able to read the text, the best Christmas present in the world and identify the main ideas, characters, sequence of ideas and events and relate with your experience. That is what we did in the last part of the lesson. Then we will do it again by revisiting the summary. Based on your understanding of the story, you will be able to respond to a variety of questions, familiar and un unfamiliar context and from familiar and unfamiliar texts, verbally and in writing. And also use the words appropriately to deduce meaning from clues given in context while reading a variety of texts. Then understand time and tense, in which time you will use which tense and particularly use past and past perfect tense in context and by doing so in context we will discover the forms past tense and past perfect tense and use them in speech and writing for real life purposes. So, the one C and learners we are going to learn past tense and past perfect tense. Okay. Before we move on to learners let us tell you let us tell you the story again. Here is a story for you, myself and Divanshi will be alternatively reading. So, let me uh, begin with, so here is the story of the best Christmas present in the world. Learners, we have learnt, Divanshi, we have learnt that the story sets in first world war situation. The entire world was fighting, the British and the uh, Germans were fighting each other. But fortunately, for that moment, they came together to celebrate Christmas. So. The narrator went to a junk shop in Bridport where he noticed a roll top desk. He wanted to buy a cheaper one and he found this was a cheaper one. So, he bought a roll top desk with his little money. He wanted to make it look good and to polish it. He removed the roll top and pulled out the drawers. Fine. He polished the scratches and he noticed a secret drawer underneath and something was written there in the envelope in a shaky hand. Jim's lost letter received on 25th January 1915 to be buried with me when the time comes. When the narrator opened the box, there was an envelope and the address written there read, Mrs. Jim McPherson, 12 Copper Beaches, Bridport, Dorset. The date in the letter was 26 December 1914. Fine. The box, some, something was written, but in the, in the box was uh, there is a letter addressed to Mrs. Jim McPherson. 
The narrator led the letter. The letter was written by Jim from the battlefield in 1914 to his wife and it was on the eve of Christmas. The letter described how the soldiers and the officers from two different battling armies came together to celebrate Christmas Eve. Fine. The British and German soldiers who were fighting against each other in the war till then wanted to come together and celebrate Christmas. Jim was the commander of Allied forces. One of his officers, Fritz, began it by showing the white flag, wishing the other side. Happy Christmas, Tommy. Happy Christmas. Soldiers from the other side responded saying, same to you. They were shouting, don't shoot lads from the both sides. Jim and an officer from the other side sat together and ate Christmas cakes and shared their drink. They were chatting for some time and talked about their places in their civil jobs. Soldiers from the both armies played football and Jim's team won by 2-1. Then the soldiers moved to their side. When the narrator finished reading the letter, he folded it and put it in the envelope back. Next morning, he drove into Bridport to find Mrs. Jim McPherson and asked at the address. People, people there said that she had been admitted into the hospital. The narrator went to the hospital where the very old lady was admitted. And she learned that she was 101 years old. He handed over the letter to her. The lady started speaking to him, thinking that it was Jim and she felt happy that he, Jim, had come back to be with her on the Christmas Eve. Our learners, we have some, the story has been narrated in past tense, then many actions in the past. So, Divansi, we will notice some of the past tense and past perfect tense for forms in the text, then we will learn them. Look at the sentence, the portion from the textbook. Uh, it is there, it appears on your screen. I spotted it in a junk shop in Bridport. Then the man said it was made in early 19th century and this one was in bad condition. So, look at the underlined uh, words and in bold. What are the words? Spotted. Then? Said. Then? Was. Okay. What do these words in bold convey? They, they say something about that happened in the past. Now, there is another paragraph for you learners which appears. Please read. Devanshi. A tall man entered the room. He had to bend himself to enter the room as he went far rear the fan. People in the room were scared that his head might hit the fan. They warned him to be careful. He said that he was aware of it, but he did not notice the bulb on the other side and he hit it. Everybody laughed. Okay, learners, let me also read out for you. A tall man entered the room. He had to bend himself to enter the room because he was very tall. And as he went near the fan, people in the room were scared that he, his head might hit the fan. They warned him to be careful. He said that he was aware of it, but he did not notice the bulb on the other side and he hit it and everyone laughed. Look at the verbs there. The one see, you can see that a tall man entered, entered, then he had to bend himself, he went near, then scared, then they warned. Then he said and he did not notice, he hit and everyone laughed. So, all the actions took place in the past. Look at another sentence, we will come back to this learners. Look at another sentence from the story. The veneer had lifted almost everywhere, both fire and water had taken their toll on this desk. So. This, this action also, actions also had uh, taken place in the past. They took place in the past. Look at it. The veneer had lifted almost everywhere. The fire and water had taken their toll on the desk. Look at the verbs, verb forms there. Had lifted, had taken. So, what, what do they mean? 
what do they mean? Look at the sentences there. The veneer had its damages before the narrator bought it. So, they had uh, the veneer had lifted almost everywhere before the narrator bought it. Okay. So, there are two actions. One action we are using had had plus past participle, then other action we are using past tense. So, look at it. Fire and water had damaged the desk before the narrator bought it again. So, this is how two actions in the past are used. Let us not bother about too much about rules. Let us now go on to see some, some more sentences read and notice the form. Notice the form. Divanshi, could you read the sentences? Last week, I told my friends that I would visit them. Second, last year I visited Mumbai. It was a great experience. Third, I was the captain of our school hockey team when I was in class 10th. Fourth, I lived in Bangalore during 22 to 2004. Okay. So, look at those verbs used there. When did, when did this event uh, take place, Devansi? The, all the events last week, it had taken last year. I was the captain of the school when I was in class 10. I lived in, in Bangalore during 2002-2004, long past. So, in the long past, we are using simple past. Now, look at uh, the sentences here. Look at it. Our teacher had told us to submit the assignment, but he forgot it. Then, Ragul met his friend at the station as he had promised. Vanita had finished her work and went to play. When I reached the station, the train had already left. When I finished the work, the teacher had already left. I wrote the answer to the last question. The bell had already rung. When the police officer saw them violating the traffic, before they had reached the point. I had promised to help her, but I could not do it. When Gandhiji had called for action, people of this country supported him. Learners, look at the verb forms in bold. Our teacher had told us to submit the assignment, but he forgot it. Which action took place uh, first, uh, uh, Devanshi? Our teacher had told us, but he forgot later. Rahul met his friend at the station as he had promised. He promised first, then he met him. Fifth sentence, when I finished the work, the teacher had already left. So, teacher left before this one. So, learners, there are two actions in the past. Then one of the actions, the earlier action we use past perfect that is had rang, had promised. Okay. Now, let us not look go serious into the rules. That is not very important. You will understand. You will discover it later by the end of this lesson. But let us do some activity. I am going to read out the sentences. Divanshi and you learners will be responding with appropriate past perfect and past forms. There will be two blanks in the same sentence. The school assembly become or became or had become quiet well before the headmaster reached or had reached. Which action took place first? The school assembly had become quiet well before the headmaster reached. Very good. When I dash reach, reached, had reached the station, the train arrived, arrived, had arrived. When I reached the station, the train had arrived. Hmm. When I reached the station, the train had already arrived. Fine. When I see, saw, had seen him, he moves, moved, had moved out of the hotel. When I saw him, hmm. he, he had moved out of the hotel. Very good. I noticed, noticed, had noticed the difference before they tell, told, had told me. I noticed the difference before they had told me. Very great. When I enter, entered, had entered the house. My brother goes, went or had gone to play. When I entered the house, my brother had gone to play. Very good. Learners, I, uh, I think uh, you are getting it. Whenever captain asked, asked, had asked the team to exercise, many of us started, start or had started doing it. 
When our captain asked the team to exercise, many of us had started doing it. Fine. Let's discover the form. Uh, of course, we will do it uh, in the whiteboard now. Before that, let us say that uh, when do you use uh, past perfect? There are two actions in the past. An action which which took place earlier. We use had plus past participle. That is past perfect. Then the later action we use past tense. The example he had he had told me beforehand. Then before he did something, he had he had told us, told me something. So the first action is always in uh, uh, past perfect. So it had happened before he joined. It had happened before he joined, which is the first action. It happened. Then he joined later. <coughs> so now. Here are some more sentences for you learners, which you will be answering. The one she is doing it for you here. Come on, I am reading out. When I reached the station, when I reached the station, the train left or had left? When I reached the station, the train had left. When I dash entered the theater, he started or had started his speech. When I entered the theater. He has started his speech. He had started his speech. Fine. Gandhi ji yearned or had yearned respect of the people even before India got or get, uh, had got its independence. Gandhi ji had earned the respect of people even before India got its independence. My brother started had started doing a job even before he completed or had completed his degree. My brother had started doing a job even before he completed his degree. Learners, we have learnt past and past perfect tense, how to use it for real life purposes. Uh, we also discovered the rules by doing so many activities and exercises. Let us also take stock of uh, what we have learnt. Learning outcomes of the lesson. The learners read textual and non textual material in English with comprehension. Identify details, characters, main idea and sequence of ideas and events in the textual, non-textual material. Use appropriate grammatical forms in communication. Example, noun, pronoun, verb, determiners, time and tense, passivization, adjectives and adverb. And as, uh, we learned that grammar past and past perfect. Then, having learned all of this, he should organize sentences coherently in English with the help of verbal and visual clues and in the sense of audience whom you are addressing. Those learners are visually challenged, you will be able to use them, uh, read them with uh, braille and use braille uh, script for purposes. Thank you very much learners. This is the second part of the first lesson class yeah, here the best Christmas present in the world. We will meet in the third part. Thank you very much. Thank you Devanshi.